What's going on everybody? My name's Alonso. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna be showing you the only five knots you'll ever need to know in order to weave any tree net right on this rope right here. So with that being said, let's jump right in. So the very first knot I'm going to be covering is the constrictor hitch. And the constrictor hitch is basically exactly what it sounds like. The harder you pull on it, the harder it constricts. So it's a really, really good knot for starting pieces of paracord. So if you were working on a tree net and you had a new piece of paracord and you needed to tie it somewhere on your skeleton or on your perimeter, this would be the perfect knot to use. And with that being said, let me show you exactly how to tie that knot. So first, we're going to go over and we're going to cross the lines like this. And with the working end, meaning the end you're working on, you're going to cross over again. And then in that same direction, you're going to come back through that little knot you made. Essentially, you're going to start by tying a clove hitch, which, spoiler alert, is one of the five knots that I use. Now, this knot gets a little bit tricky to tie here, but essentially all you're wanting to do at this point is go make like a little shoelace knot, like the little, um, a little half hitch around the opposite end. So keeping it all flowing in the same direction, we go like that, and then when we tighten it, we can see that it makes this really, really pretty knot. Now, be patient with this one. I did start with the hardest knot out of all five, but once you've tied this knot 10 to 20 times, it becomes like second nature. And as you can see here, I'm actually struggling to untie it myself. Anyway, this is the constrictor knot, and that is knot number one. Let's move on to knot number two. Knot number two is the clove hitch. Knot number two, and this is not really a knot because you need something for it to bind on in order for it to actually work. Same thing with the constrictor hitch, actually. For this video's purposes, you can just call it a knot, but just know that it's not actually a knot. So knot number two, and this is probably the knot that I used the most when I weave tree nets, and that is the clove hitch. Now, good news, if you got the constrictor hitch down, the clove hitch is pretty much the exact same thing with one less step. So the clove hitch is like the constrictor hitch, but much easier. So just like the constrictor, we're gonna start again going around our rope here, and we're gonna cross over once again, and then on the opposite side of the trailing end, just like before, we are going to hop over the rope in the same direction. We wanna make sure it's kinda of like a corkscrew, and then we're gonna pass that working end through that hole that we just created, and boom. You've got a nice clove hitch here with the tails coming out on the opposite ends. That's how you know you've got a clove hitch versus a girth hitch, is that the tails come out on opposite ends of this little loop here. So this is the clove hitch. Make sure you get really comfortable with this one because if you're weaving tree nets, you're going to be tying potentially thousands of these. And no, I'm not kidding. And now let's move on to knot number three. So now we are on to knot number three, which is the girth hitch. Now the girth hitch serves essentially the exact same purpose as the clove hitch. I don't really use the girth hitch as much because it isn't as binding as the clove hitch, so it tends to slide around a lot more. However, I will admit that the girth hitch does look a lot prettier than the clove hitch, and it makes both of your working strands come out on the same side. So it can actually make it a little more aesthetic to look at when you don't have one coming out of the top and one coming out of the bottom. But with that being said, I do think this is a pretty knot and I do think that you should know it. So here is how you tie it. So just like the first two knots with the constrictor and the clove hitch, we're gonna be going around and over just like so. However, the difference here is instead of doing this corkscrew motion where we go around the rope in the same direction. We're gonna go around the rope in this direction once, and then we're gonna flip directions and go around the opposite way. So instead of going over like this, we are going to go under like this. 
So we're gonna do that here, pass it through that loop just like before. And then you notice we get this really nice shape here where they both come out of the same side and it's really aesthetic, but you can also see that this one slides. Sometimes it slides, not all the time, but it slides much easier than the clove. So this is potentially my least favorite knot and I don't actually use this one a whole bunch in my tree netting journey, but you might like it. So I thought I would show you. Anyway, let's move on to knot number four. But before we do that, really quickly, I wanna ask you guys to smash that like button down below and subscribe if you haven't already. I've been posting new tree net weaving videos every single month for now, hoping to up that frequency once I find a little more time because this is just a little side project thing I do for now. But your support has meant the world to me and watching this channel grow has been very rewarding for me. So I would appreciate it if you would really quickly subscribe and help me get up to 10K subscribers. At the time of filming this video, we are around 6,400 and my analytics as always show that most of you guys are not subscribed yet. So I think we could really easily get to those 10K. Help me out guys and thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So now let's move on to knot number four. And knot number four is called the barrel knot. And the reason I use the barrel knot is to finish my end. So let's say I'm weaving and this is the last bit of paracord I have. I don't just want to leave it on a clove hitch because with vibrations and like people jumping on the net and stuff, there is a chance that this could loosen up over time and start to untie itself, which isn't a huge deal because you should have been tying hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clove hitches. But anyway, I like the barrel knot because it gives that piece of paracord a nice bomber finish to where if it did slip a little bit, the barrel would actually jam up against the clove hitch and it wouldn't allow it to go anywhere. So basically what we're doing, we are going to tie a knot with our little end here around this end in order to prevent any of the ends from going into this clove hitch. And we are just gonna do a barrel. And so we just start with the end. We could put our thumb right here, go around our thumb once, twice, and then on the third time, we're gonna go through all of the loops that we just made. And you can see it's called a barrel because it makes this nice little barrel shape. And so now, both of these strands are one, so if this thing slid up to the knot, it would jam right there and it couldn't really go anywhere else. So the barrel knot, useful for finishing the ends of your paracord and ensuring that nothing unties from itself. And also a really easy one to tie in my opinion, unless you have a very, very, very short tail. So make sure you allow yourself at least six inches of tail in order to tie this knot. If I only had like three inches, this one becomes really difficult to actually finish and like put the end through that loop. So that's the barrel knot. And finally, let's move on to our final knot in this series. Okay, and now for the final knot of the series is the double fisherman's or double barrel knot. And you guessed it, it's literally the exact same thing as the last knot, except we're going to tie two of them. So now, let me paint you a different scenario. Let's say we finished weaving with our piece of cord right here. And instead of finishing off this piece of cord here, we just wanted to tie a new piece of cord to it to extend them. I use the double fisherman's personally. There are many, many, many knots you can use to join two ropes of similar diameter together, such as the Flemish bend or the sheep bend or even an EDK. There's so many, but I think the double fisherman's or double barrel looks the best. So basically we're going to put both of these strands of cord opposite each other. So the end of one faces that way and the end of the other faces this way. And with each of those, just like before, we're going to tie a barrel. So just with that same thumb trick, we're gonna go one, two, and then through. And that's one barrel right there with the strand facing that way. And now with this strand, we're going to tie another barrel. One, 
two, and then through. And you'll notice now that when I pull on this strand, they just bind up against each other. And it literally makes two stopper knots pulling against each other and makes this really cool little barrel in between your weave. So now you've got new cord and you can continue weaving. And if you wanted to add another piece, you can do another double fisherman's and then another and then another. Uh, this one's really useful. I probably use this one the second most right behind the clove hitch. And those are the five knots that I use to weave tree nets. I hope you guys found this video super helpful. If you would rather hire somebody and commission them to build your tree net on site for you, please visit my website at www.treenetweaves.com and we can more than happily help you out with that. Feel free to follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of little snippets of the projects that I do here and there. And also feel free to join my Patreon where we're talking about weaving pretty much all the time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.